Hi everyone, it's Grant Abbott speaking and welcome to this uh, session on Light Your Docs Wills. Um, there's a couple of things that we're going to be going through, in particular um, how to create a will uh, on the Light Your Docs site. I'm not going to go into a deep dive there, I'm presuming most of you have had a, a go at it, but I want to give you a bit of background. More importantly, I want to go through the logical uh, formula of working your way through the will and also uh, some of our more more uh, recent features that were built into the will and go through a case study and show you what that they're like. They're very advanced and certainly like anything else uh, in the marketplace. So let's get down into it and have a look at like your docs wills, looking at what is a will, um, how you can do a will legally as an accountant or financial planner, um, and how to do uh, um, do one on like your docs with some of our new features. It's all very very exciting. Before I go uh, a bit further, I'm going to just bounce out of here. I think this is uh, is really important. Is uh, we've got uh, coming up. Um, you'll see here uh, from July the nineteenth. Uh, we've got. Uh, we're still working on the pricing, but that's around indicatively. Uh, the Succession Asset Protection and Estate Planning Advisor Association set down competency standards, which you can find at www.sapepa.com.au. Uh, it's a non-for-profit association there to really provide you with a backstop, enabling you to, to do wills, uh, to do EPOAs, to do um, protection, succession, and really being on top of your game. Now, those competency standards, we've uh, distilled them down into three days of online training, starting on the 19th, the 20th and 21st, uh, there's 14 modules uh, ranging from wills, SMSF wills, uh, building asset protection mechanisms, uh, deep diving into different structures. So there's a lot that's actually going on there, which is very exciting. I'll be doing most of the event. Uh, we've got Tim Munro, uh, Susanna Bransgrove. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, we've got Tony and Wallace, uh, all from the association. I'll also be chiming in with specific areas there for you. So it's an extremely detailed, uh, advanced course um, set at a postgraduate level, uh, an AQF8 for those of you who know your training jargon. It's definitely worthwhile. I uh, will be sending you the link through. So make sure you have a look about the event, why it's important for you to go, um, going through uh, the, the key areas that we're going to be look at. And of course, go through each of the different modules so you know what you're going to get um, involved. Now, I would strongly suggest um, Sir Pepper has been in touch with uh, a number of universities, uh, Kaplan, etc., cetera, um, who ultimately, uh, at this early stage, it's just a little bit early for the association for them to be building courses for us. But when they do, they're expecting to charge between three to $10,000 for it. So this is a, definitely a great way to branch out and start a whole brand new advice area. So that's the 19th of July, the 20th of July and the 21st. On the 21st, you'll have an hour and a half um, multiple choice assignment. And for that, uh, you'll be entitled to um, certification if you pass, if you reach a 75% pass level. Um, you'll get a pass and you'll be an accredited succession asset protection and estate planning advisor. How exciting is that? So watch out for that one. Um, it's coming out and we'll send the links to you um, later on when we have the, the video of this. Anyway, let's go back to our presentation and um, have a look at our next slide, which is important. Uh, most of you are probably well aware, in fact, um, I know uh, just recently, Ash had a friend um, over in Adelaide. In fact, we've been dealing quite a few through Abbott and Morley lawyers, uh, people dying in tested, which in, in some instances is not a bad thing, but where there's no will, it can be an absolute drama, particularly if you've got uh, blended families. So it's absolutely crucial to make sure you've got a, at least a, a basic will. And you'll see when we go into like your docs, there is no such thing as a basic will. We need to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're locking and loading and it's as strong as possible. Now, it, it's virtually impossible in any state, and I'll talk about it a little bit later on, to 
uh, get around the family provisions claims. Once anything goes into the estate, the process, uh, generally as the client dies, you get a death certificate. Um, the executor gets the will or the lawyer who holds the will uh, gets that. Um, they have a look through the will to find out if it's the last will. Uh, put it before the Supreme Court of relevant state to get probate, which is just evidence that this is the last will and testament of the deceased or the testator. Um, and then, of course, we go down the, the track and the executor starts to call in, um, obviously, uh, any outstandings, pay out any debts, uh, pay out any tax liabilities, and then whatever's left over, we'll then go through the process of looking at specific gifts and after that, then obviously the disposition of the residual estate, which I'll have a look at a little bit later on. So it's absolutely crucial to understand that logic. The, the logic is, of course, finding out the executor, who's going to be the executor. The next one is paying out taxes, loans, particularly if they've already got a protector where there's a family protection trust that's being owed by the testator. Um, that loan will actually have to be paid out. Um, then we go down to specific gifts and then you'll see when we get into uh, the new LYD will number two or version two that you can have the residual estate so the, the principal beneficiary the secondary the tertiary beneficiary well, we've got a new feature now that we can just have instead of those after our specific gifts what is left over can go into a singular bloodline trust uh, for the benefit of bloodline beneficiaries, which I'm going to show you how to do. So it's all very exciting. From a, a perspective on the legal side of things, um, if you are simply doing a getting the client's data capture, completing the will, then there's not a provision of a legal service, mainly because um, Abbott Morley and the system you're using um, really is the same system that Abbott Morley uses. Um, essentially, that will drive it there through for you. Um, so Abbott Morley signs off and you're off and running. Now, of course, if you're getting into a very um, nasty situation or you think there's going to be a fight or family provisions claim, then I strongly suggest you either go down that protector route um, or alternatively just contact us at Abbott Morley and we can help you uh, work your way through any particular client issue. But it's a very exciting time, a great opportunity for accountants and financial planners to start building wills um, asset protection, etc. And I know you're not overly comfortable um, doing it at any point in time, which is absolutely crucial to get that accreditation because part of the competency standards for being a SEPEPA advisor is that you are able to um, take data and unless you're a lawyer, put it into a system in order to create wills enduring powers of attorney, advanced healthcare directives, and of course, our bloodline trusts, etc. So again, this is uh, where we're going to. Um, really, if we're building one for a client, we want to do a will and enduring power of attorney. Our enduring powers of attorney have got successor director built in. If you haven't done successor directors, it's absolutely crucial. But bearing in mind, again, all of this um, thematic, uh, deep diving on the laws, the legislation, the guidelines, the rulings, will be done in that three-day course. So let me go through what we've got. Uh, some key terms for you. Uh, I don't, I'll just go through these pretty quickly. Um, a will is a legally valid document. Uh, we're just dealing with one at the Abbott, Abbott, Abbott Morley at the moment, uh, where a solicitor had drafted up a will. It was a very, very poor will, um, gave a, uh, uh, a de facto who'd been living with a client for 10 years, uh, effectively uh, set them up so that they were only gonna get $35,000 out of a $3 million estate. So as soon as you know that, it's dangerous because you know there's going to be a family provisions claim. So anyway, uh, but interestingly from that, uh, we found out from the executor that this 2020 uh, will that was to be used supposedly as the client's last will is obviously going to be contested because the client had um, dementia from 2017, so lacked mental capacity. So with a will, it not only has to be legal valid document uh, under the various state-based laws, for example, you have two witnesses, who are not able to benefit out of the will signing off. Uh, but more importantly, and this is the first step, is to make sure they get a doctor's certificate um, that's evidencing their mental capacity. So again, I'll just raise that. You do not even start to think about doing any document, and it doesn't matter whether it's an upgrade of a deed, anything, 
uh, where effectively the client hasn't got mental capacity. So I would strongly suggest once, once you go down this track is that uh, particularly as your clients get a bit older, that they get a, a certificate from their doctor as their mental capacity. Uh, the executor, as I said before, um, we've obviously the testator dies, we've got the deceased and the executor steps in. Now, bearing in mind, and, and I'm going to give you a bit of a word of warning, a couple of things. I'm not a great fan of accountants or advisors, uh, financial planners acting as executors, because it can severely limit uh, the amount of money that you can charge your state. So it might end up being a pro bono exercise. So you've got to be very careful around that one. Um, and definitely, absolutely definitely, when I go through, make sure you're the, uh, the advisor to the estate, even if you are the executor. Um, now with the executor, you also need, if there's potential there's going to be a family provisions challenge, you need to make sure the executor has a bit of backbone. It doesn't fold like a house of cards otherwise what's going to happen is everything is going to go into abeyance. So the executor needs to be someone who's um, switched on, is smart, savvy, um, and has got backbone. So that's crucial. Uh, quite often just having your spouse as executor can be very debilitating um, uh, event, particularly if there's a family provisions claim because they're going to get a double barrels uh, from a no win, no fee lawyer. So just be very careful and explain this to your client what the role of the executor is, and it's not an easy role. Now, the administrator, um, if there's no um, uh, executor, so we've, we've died and tested, um, then we can get a court appointed executor or what we call an administrator of the estate. And quite often it may well be the public trustee, but again, I could act as an administrator of the estate um, or any um, legal firm could as well. Beneficiary is obviously a person who's going to benefit out of the will. Sounds pretty obvious. Um, the will is almost like a de facto trust in that regard. Um, there's two ways of benefiting. Uh, first off is by way of a specific gift. Um, and you'll see that a lot of wills, the, the, the philosophy we've got in our mind is that uh, specific gifts, uh, for example, like jewellery or this, but it's not. We can actually do specific gifts such as a amount of cash, a specific property or whatever going down. So in the order of the estate is, of course, as I said before, paying off any debts, uh, paying off any taxes, calling in any monies. Um, and then after that, we then go to the specific gifts. And after that, we have what we call the residual estate, which is to be distributed. Uh, probate, we talked about that. Unfortunately, it's 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 just a system that by the time you get your death certificate, um, you find the will, you go and prove it um, in the Supreme Court in front of the probate registers there, you're looking at least minimum three to four months, possibly five or six months. It was a contested will. You know, it's probably going to cost maybe you know, thirty or $40,000 in legal fees plus um, it'll take a year. If then there's a family provisions claim on that, um, it could take, you know, it could take like four or five years and cost, you know, upwards of a million dollars. So again, this process we've got in Australia is a very long process. If we have a look over in the US, it's exactly the same, but they use what we call is a living trust, uh, which is certainly becoming a lot more popular courtesy of Abbott Morley and Lightyear Docs in Australia. And of course, it's one of the key components that we're looking at on that three-day course for being a, an accredited subpepper advisor. Uh, initial administration, where we talked about that, paying off taxes, funeral expenses, etc. Specific gifts I talked about, um, it could be cash, um, it could be a forgiveness of a loan, for example, um, it could be a specific property. So if a farm is to go to one of the children, then you actually do it by way of a specific gift rather than the uh, a residual estate. The problem is with the residual estate, you're only left with what you're left with. So if you wanted to give something away specifically, whether it's a car, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's a farm uh, or property, then you're gonna do it by way of a specific gift. Uh, residual estate, we talked about, you know, once that's whatever's left over goes to residual estate, then we have the main beneficiary. So there's two ways of doing it. You'll see when we go through, I just want to give you a heads up. So the first one is the principal beneficiary. Typically, um, you'll see with wills is, you know, that if, you know, John dies, Sally is to get 100% of my benefits. The problem about that is it usually stops there, but the question is, well, what, happy, what happens if Sally's not alive? 
Um, is it to be split with other principal beneficiaries if Sally's not the only principal beneficiary? Does it go down to a secondary beneficiary, for example? Um, or is it just left for bloodline? And all of these are options, as you'll see once we get into the LYD will. Um, so secondary beneficiary is, you know, if Sally or the main principal main beneficiary is not alive, it goes down to the secondary beneficiary. And likewise, if they're not alive, it can go down to the tertiary beneficiary, which we'll look at. Renunciation is something that's generally not used that much in Australia. I used it for my mother recently, um, mainly because if she received, uh, when dad died, if she um, received the amount that was sitting under the will going to her, effectively, it would have blown her out for assets test for social security purposes. So she was able to renounce uh, well, any amount, but she announced uh, the amount that was over the maximum threshold uh, for the full pension um, and that went to her children which was the boys so that was that was fine so renunciation fits in there and a testamentary trust is a um, generally um, is a trust that's created by the executor you may have seen uh, other wills where um, legal firms will put the whole testamentary trust inside the will uh, I'm not a great fan. It's a good way to charge extra fees and pat it out, but you tend to lose the flexibility just in case, for example, you've got a testamentary trust that's built in there and the government decides to tax testamentary trust at 40%. Effectively, you're stuck in there. And I've seen that happen um, just recently as well. Not so much the tax, but being forced into a testamentary trust. So you want to have that flexibility, either having it automatic um, or... Um, optional, but more importantly, leave the terms and conditions and what style of trust you'll be doing uh, up to you as the advisor, whether it's a leading member trust, a bloodline trust, or is it just going to be a standard discretionary trust that's wrapped up as a testamentary trust? Or do you actually want something that's got a, a lot more, a lot more uh, direction uh, in there? You can almost make it a virtually a fixed trust. So again, the testamentary trust, and we'll have a look through that. So what I want to do is I'm going to take you into um, uh, the case study. Uh, so we've got John Smith, age 65. It's a fairly simple one, but I want to take you through and show you what it's like. There's a house which is jointly owned with his wife, Sally Smith. Now, because it's jointly owned, it means that when he passes away, it, it uh, goes directly over to Sally. So John's interest just transfers over to Sally. You'll find that uh, when you buy a property in Australia, the lawyers will generally ask, do you want a tenants in common? Um, or do you want a joint? Um, if it's a blended family, um, sometimes it's better to do tenants in common so you can at least leave that part of your estate to your, or maybe the children from your first marriage, etc. But again, so just be careful on that one. Um, and if you're doing a will for the client, definitely uh, make sure you find out whether, um, if you get the uh, land title, to find out whether it's uh, jointly or whether it is effectively tenants in common. Now, John's got a property portfolio of a million dollars. And uh, he's got two children and one stepchild he does not get along with. So that's a child from Sally's uh, first marriage. Uh, just doesn't get along with him. Uh, John wants to give Sally um, $100,000 and his super of six fifty. dollars So with a super, um, generally... I wouldn't be, because she's a spouse, I wouldn't even be putting it through the estate. Keep it away from the estate because the, the big difference is, again, remember the time lag we talked about getting money uh, out of the estate. You've got to show probate, executor and all that stuff. With super, you don't have to. So you can pay an amount directly to her or she can start a pension from the fund if you want. You also find with a testamentary trust, and this is generally not known, certainly by the legal profession, uh, but she could start a testamentary trust uh, directly uh, from her superannuation proceeds. So it doesn't go through the estate and get caught up in a potential family provisions challenge. Uh, what happens is it goes over um, directly out of the super fund. You will set up the testamentary trust for her. Uh, and of course, that has its own benefits and also a lot of asset protection, bloodline protection, and also a minus tax as uh, ordinary adult taxpayers, but it doesn't go through the estate. Particularly here, we're looking at a blended family. So there's a good chance it's actually going to be, um, you know, obviously there's going to be a, a potential family provisions claim. 
Uh, when we have a look there, the, the remainder is held for his two children, uh, Max and June, and um, their children as well, so his bloodline grandchildren. A uh, stepchild, Nathan, is a drug addict and stolen from John and Sally in the past and has to get nothing from the estate. So again, that's a pretty big call um, and there's been a number of cases. There was one just recently, a family provisions claim uh, in Western Australia, whereby a uh, son who was 62 years of age, believe it or not, and been essentially a drug addict all his life, uh, they were awarded, awarded quite sizable uh, amount from the estate and had been essentially not left out, but um, virtually not properly recompensed. Um, and uh, all the family said, look, you know, he got so much through his life, but the court awarded an appropriate amount. So let's go in and um, I'm just going to take you into the uh, Lightyear docs. Um, again, remember, um, this is our, uh, where we've got our preview of the uh, association conference. Have a good look at this. Please spend some time on this because Honestly, it's, uh, it's the biggest thing going around in town at the moment. It's going to be very exciting, and I'd love you to be one of the first advisors there. So I'm just in the, um, uh, you'll see here, um, I'm in the, uh, my vault. Uh, so I've pre-prepared one, and I've got the light uh, year docs will. So I'm just going to go in and pre-prepare this. Um, so we'll go in, and I've relaunched it. Um, so you can relaunch as many times as you want if you're a strategist or you're a licensee. So we've got the Smith Will. Um, I've got the Abbott Morley logo tag there. If you're doing a will, definitely use the uh, AM001 uh, tag to put Abbott Morley logo on there. Uh, just like we've got there you go, up, up behind me there to make sure you've got that sitting on your documents. So the first thing is we go through, and uh, this is really important for you. Um, we put in all the common parties. So this is, this is like a little self-contained CRM. So by putting in all the common parties, it means we can go through, um, you'll find with uh, John and Sally, you can actually build um, a will each out of those, not mirror wills, because virtually with blended families, it's impossible to mirror a will. But we've got an individual there, I've got John, I've got his um, address there. We've got Sally there. Uh, we've got his eldest son, Max, um, his eldest daughter, June. Uh, we've got uh, John Jones there, who's a friend of his, who's potentially a, an executor. We've got uh, Max's uh, child, Ben, and then we've got uh, William, also Max's child. Uh, June doesn't have any children. And then we've got Nathan Smith, who's the, um, the, the drug addict there as well. And it's quite amazing, you'll see when we come around, we're doing a will now, but when we get around to willing, uh, living trusts, um, we can actually build some amazing uh, sub-trusts into these living trusts, and that'll be coming out probably. Uh, we'll definitely have that ready uh, for the conference uh, coming up on the 19th of July. So we start off with the general, and let's go through. So I've put in all the parties that are potentially in there uh, for us. Now, if it's an EPOA as well, uh, as, as well as a will, um, because there's a successor director solution in there. I'd put in uh, obviously companies and corporate trustees, et cetera. But at the moment, we're just sitting here with a basic will. So the first thing you know, I'm going to do is please enter the date, uh, the date the last will and testament will be executed. Now, we don't know that, so we're going to leave that off. But uh, generally, if you know the client is coming in today to execute, or you're doing the execution through uh, Tony Anamoulis at Abbott Morley, then you'd relaunch and you put that date in. So I'll assume that the client's coming in on Friday, uh, which is the 30th of April. Now, do you want to make another will for the spouse? Uh, we're going to go no in this particular instance, uh, but it, we, you know, we could quite easily do that. Now, this is an important one. Um, and are you an accountant, financial planner, or estate planning advisor preparing this document from a client's data capture? Is this set of documents to be prepared from a completed data capture, completed entirely by the client? And I would put yes there because it gives you that legal protection. You'll find the data capture um, is actually here. I'll just jump in the strategy support center. You'll find there's a great email there for your clients. Um, if you go down here, client emails, data captures, and all that of advice. Um, if you want to do here, wills and enduring powers of attorney, um, this email here is what we call a swipe. So you just put that in your headline. 
uh, copy the body of this and send it out to the client and you'll find that then there's a data capture um, attached to it as well. So you just send that out as an attachment, send it out to your clients and probably it's not a bad idea to do a lot of it. Um, so we get down here and, oops, so that's one I've done before. Um, so we've got in there, we've got the date of the client's data capture. Um, we then put in the name of our firm. So we've got the name of the accounting or financial firm, uh, Julie Williams from um, Williams Financial. Remember I said that, you know, it's important to do that. Um, so what we're doing is that'll give us a letter of comfort from Abbott Morley that there's no provision of legal services. So this is crucial uh, for you to complete that. So with the test data, and this is where the common party comes in because I can just choose. If I wanted to write, get rid of John, if John died, I could use this form for anyone else. Um, I could do it for Sally if I was doing the other one, but I've got John Smith. As soon as I put in John Smith, you can see there, for example, John Jones, see how it changes. Um, I've got John Smith there. So John Smith is our test data. Uh, we've then got, uh, do you want to appoint a professional advisor? So again, this is essentially um, what you want to be putting in there. So what we'll do is we'll just put um, Williams Financial PTY Limited. And so that now puts you in as a professional advisor to the executor. The next one, you can either go here next or you can go up here. So what I'm going is next. So now we go down again, remember that logical one. So we've got the common parties, we've got the test data. Um, now we're going through the executor. So I've got Sally um, and I've got Max as well. So they're both joint. Um, so to add a joint, all you have to do is just go add another. Now I've gone that because again, um, Sally's a spouse. From the first marriage, we've got Max there from the, um, sorry, Max from the first marriage, Sally's the second marriage. So we want to essentially um, have them both in there representing their interests as best as possible. Now, if um, obviously if Sally or Max is not around, then as joint, the other ones take over. Uh, but here with a successor um, executor, do you want to automatically appoint a successor executor? I would go yes. Um, and then we've got here, we've got June Smith as well. Um, and I've got there John Jones, uh, but what I'll do is I might just take John out of it. The way you do that is you can delete that repetition. See how I've done that with that little arrow there? I delete the repetition. So John's out of it. So the successor, so the first directors are Sally and Max jointly. Um, then if both of them are not around or they don't want to do it, it goes down to June Smith. And then if there's no one else, um, then we can go in and we'll use John Jones, which is um, his friend from uh, many years ago. Now we can keep on going down. Remember, we can build it in, but we're gonna go no here. So that should be enough people. You've got Sally and Max, they're not around June. If she's not around, then it goes to John Jones. So we've done the executorship. Now what we're gonna do is go to specific gifts. So with the specific gifts, would you like to include a specific bequest? Now you don't have to, you can just jump straight to the residual estate. But again, the power is in the specific gifts because that becomes before the residual estate. So I'm gonna say yes, um, who's gonna actually pay taxes and duties for it? You've got a choice either the estate can the beneficiary, particularly if we're passing out a property, um, you might wanna choose that. So the details of specific gift, um, I've got, um, uh, Sally Smith, so I choose Sally Smith. Remember, she's gonna get $100,000. So is a specific gift to be shared equally by the executor? Um, obviously no, and no. if I went like this, then what happens, the $100,000 will be split uh, by the executor amongst a number of people. Usually that will be for personal effects, jewelry, that sort of stuff. But here, and notice how, see how it can change things, but my old uh, dialogue is still involved there. So I've got um, Sally Smith, um, she's female, um, and she's to get $100,000. So that's our specific gift. If I wanted to add another gift, um, then I just see what it says, click the button to add another specific gift. So then I go to the next. Now, here's a big one. Uh, what I've got here is I can choose. So, and I'm just gonna, this is a brand new feature. Uh, the single testamentary trust is the bloodline of the testator only. 
The spouse of the testator can be included as a separate beneficiary. Otherwise, it is only the bloodline, which includes relatives with the same DNA in case there are no children. Further, the executor is the first trustee of the trust. Um, so in this instance, it would be Sally and Max, and also the appointor. Importantly, the testamentary trust will be established by the executor in consultation with the advisory estate, which is used you and will put in place appointed successor appointments and so on. Complete the, so obviously the executor starts off there, but then you appoint other one. Complete the interview below and add any conditions to the trust, for example, any minor beneficiary may receive an income distribution, does not receive a capital distribution to age 25. So we've got a lot of stuff there. So um, what we're gonna do there is I'm gonna go, um, do you want to do that? I'm gonna say yes. So the question now is the testamentary trust, remember it was for uh, June and also Max, but not for Sally. So do we want Sally to be included as a beneficiary? We go, no. Is there any other trust or company, for example, a bucket company? No. Um, are there any other further terms and conditions? Well, it's gonna be for bloodline there. So you can add um, any terms and conditions. Uh, for example, uh, what we do there is, Nathan Smith is to be excluded um, specifically as a beneficiary. So that's okay there. Um, any child beneficiary. In fact, what you can do there is uh, dum, 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 dum. just to copy and paste this. This is not too bad. Oops, sorry. So did I get that? So let me just copy, copy, paste. So any minor beneficiary may receive income distribution, so on and so forth, but don't get any capital to age 25. So you can put in um, as many terms and conditions as you want um, there, um, and then that will come out. So uh, we could also put in here, for example, um, uh, during, oh, sorry, if one of the uh, major beneficiaries dies, all the remaining assets are to be shared amongst class of beneficiaries. So what you can do there is, for example, if uh, June dies, then Max will virtually control the whole process. So you just need to work your way through that one. It's a nice little feature. Now, binding vote, um, we've got it between Sally and Max because remember, they're the two executors. Um, so what we're going to do there is we've got, uh, we might choose Max Smith. Remember, because Sally's going to get a, a set amount, so there's not much he can really stuff up there. Child guardianship. Um, obviously, no, there's no child guardianship, pet guardianship. Um, again, we'll go no. Um, if they've got a pet, it will go to, obviously, Sally if she's around. I uh, can put our funeral wishes in there uh, to be cremated and ashes thrown off the manly uh, ferry. So that's a, that's a pretty a good one. Again, we could um, draft up a, a separate uh, will uh, for the spouse if we want. We just simply have to uh, put that in there as well. You'll find with this LYD will, there'll also be a, a new edition that's coming on in the next uh, day or so where we can exclude um, certain beneficiaries. Um, so when we come around to um, here, um, not so much here, but we'll be able to put down, um, okay, so include any specific request, but we'll be able to put in there if we want to get rid of um, any uh, beneficiaries, um, so to be specifically excluded. It's a lot harder, of course, uh, because when we're doing the testamentary trust, because the alternative is if I don't use a testamentary trust, I'll just take you through. So we've got the specific ifs. If I go no there, then you can start to see uh, what happens there is I'm not doing a testamentary trust, so I can exclude the... Um, uh, the people there, so I can put a Nathan uh, Smith, but remember I excluded him anyway. Um, Nathan is a drug addict and has stolen a lot of money from me. 
over time. So we can do that um, and then I can go to the principal beneficiary, for example. And remember, it's not Sally because Sally's been looked after. I could go max um, here and that goes in. And then uh, principal beneficiary is going to be also June as well. So if Max is not alive, because he's got kids um, at that time, then I would put it into that one. I'd choose as bloodline children. Um, I'd add another there. And what I can do there is obviously June Smith. Um, she's the uh, daughter and she is to get uh, 50%. That would Max have. Uh, Max was 50% as well. So I'm just looking at an alternative. We're going to stick with the testamentary trust. I'm just showing you what else it would be. But because she hasn't got kids, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick it back to Max. So if she's not around, when it dies, obviously it goes back to Max in equal proportions. Uh, secondary beneficiary, um, in that instance, if both um, Max and also June, if Max is not around, it goes to the kids anyway. Um, so is there a secondary beneficiary? So if Max is not around, his kids aren't around, then we can go yes. Um, and then we can make it, for example, make it John Jones, who's um, a mate. And he would get 100% for that one. Um, or alternatively, we can just go no. So I'll show you no, what that looks like there. And then we've got a binding vote, digital assets, all the other stuff. So let's just stick back with this one. I'm going to go yes and see how that all pops up. So you can have multiple variations there as well. So let's hope uh, I've been mucking around a while. You've got saving answers at any point in time. You've got your document preview there. Just be careful when you do use document previews because um, you know quite often they're not absolutely perfect. Um, so they quite often they'll have that. Um, all the answers here um, to all the questions, um, if you want to do that are there. But what we're going to do is we're just going to finish this off. So finish it off and we'll have a good look at what we've got. So it's all very exciting. Out of the camera, remember, we, this sits in our vault. So we can go back and make, um, uh, we can go back and make a new changes to it at any point in time. So you get there, send it off to the client in draft, let them have a look over it. Remember, I've actually given you two options there. One is a residual estate going down to multi-beneficiaries or preferably this testamentary trust, which I think is a better way of going. So we've got John Smith. We've got the letter there um, that goes to John. Um, you can see there the attached will is based on the data capture form completed with you by Julie Williams from Williams Financial. It uses current legal precedents provided by our legal firm, Adam Morley, to look after how your personal effects, assets and property will be legally gifted and transferred upon your death, your will. It's important that you read the following as of legal nature extends beyond the data capture and administrative processing completed by Julie Williams from Williams Financial and not solicited do not hold themselves out as such. However, your advisor expert in estate planning matters, including taxation. So um, that then goes through what the documents are uh, attached um, and some of the other issues there. Um, then we've got a general advice letter from Abbott Morley on executing at the will. Um, and all this package will come through anyway, if you're doing a spouse or will, uh, would come through as well. So let's go through the processes again. This will is made on 30 June, 2021 by me, John Smith's correct and true record of my wishes, bequests and testaments for a legal state upon my demise. Where it does not seek to influence or direct any trust or super fund where I was a trustee or beneficiary. So you can't use this to direct an SMSF, it's just or family trust, it's not work, not legal. Uh, revoking your earlier wills, the administration of the estate, appointment of executors. I hereby appoint my spouse, Sally Smith, my son, Max Smith, subject to their consent as my executor trustee. Each executor must consent to their appointment, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if there's a tied vote, Max is to get the binding vote. If Sally and Max predecease me or unable to, uh, I'm willing to act to continue, June Smith. And then of course, um, my uh, the next one is if no one's around there, then it's John Jones. A provision of advice, um, you've got there Williams Financial, initial administration, should call and convert any money, any part of the state, subject to pay any debts. So if you've got a protect a loan, uh, we've done a gift loan back, that will come in there, taxes, contributions, 
funeral or other expenses. Um, and then 4.2, the director shall then deal with the balance of my estate remaining after the payment, discharge of testamentary expenses in accordance with the remainder of the will. Um, so specific gifts, if Sally Smith survives me by more than 30 days, she takes $100,000. So that's the first thing the, well, sorry, after administering the estate, that's the first thing the executor will do. Now, the bloodline um, testamentary trust, I'll need to fix this up a little bit because it's just... I'll, I'll fix up the formatting anyway. This is a brand new feature. So what we've got now is we've got not that residual estate. The remaining estate, including any super benefits, although, again, you know, wouldn't be paying them directly, but if they do pay them in there, for example, because Sally's not alive, is automatically transferred into a testamentary trust to be created on my death with the fine terms and conditions. Um, the beneficiaries include the bloodline of lineage, children, relatives, or person directly descended or who share their DNA. So the spouse is not in there. Uh, Nathan Smith is to be excluded specifically as a beneficiary. Um, any minor beneficiary may receive an income distribution, uh, but it's not to receive a capital distribution until age 25 unless they acquire first home or pay for educational or, or rehabilitation expenses. I'll go and fix up that formatting. Um, if one of the major beneficiaries dies, all the remaining assets to be shared amongst the class of beneficiaries. So they're all the terms and conditions I've had. So what will happen is uh, once the administration comes around, you're the advisor, you will build, you go online to the Light Your Docs um, site and you'll build a um, leading member or family protection trust as a testamentary trust. Uh, we've got our funeral wishes there to be cremated and ashes thrown off our know, Manly Ferry. Uh, then you've got all your specific powers of executor, general powers, a testamentary trusts, etc., cetera, uh, which you can find in there. Entitlement to charge and pay, um, payment of executors. We put that in there as well, just in case you were executor, you're definitely going to get paid for it. Um, and then um, we sign the testator and signed by the executor. A lot of uh, wills don't have um, executor signing, which I think is crazy because um, imagine just being lobbed and suddenly find out you're executor, you haven't signed anything, you're caught up in that, that role. Um, what I'll do is I'll just go back and uh, let's go back and hopefully uh, we've got this LYD. We'll remember did that. I'm going to relaunch it again here um, just to show you how quick it quick it is. Um, I'm just going to go into here um, and I'm going to go no. And then that means, remember, we did the exclusion of the persons, principal beneficiary. Remember, we did all that before. So now I'm going to create a completely separate will. So isn't that fantastic? You've got two different wills you can show your client. One a testamentary trust and one then. And then once you've done that, it's very easy then to build one for Sully as well. So let's go and have a look at that package. And uh, all this package is available in the LYD will and EPOA, obviously not in the testamentary trust package, uh, but also sits in the moat and the moat in the castle. So let's go through, we've got the last will and testament for John Smith. We saw those letters again, um, saying it's been prepared off of data capture. Uh, we've got the general advice letter there as well. Um, you've seen all of this last will and testament. No, nothing's changed, but notice what's changed now. So now the beneficiary of the estate are Max Smith and daughter June Smith. Um, so excluded persons from my estate. Uh, we've got Nathan Smith, who's excluded because he's a drug addict. Specific gifts going to Sally. And then everything else goes to 50% to Max and 50% to June. Now, if Max Smith is not alive, their share of my estate is passed to their bloodline children, maybe held on trust. So again, you'd build a testamentary trust there for Max's children. Um, so effectively, it's a passing down to the grandchildren. If June's not alive, you can see here it goes back to Max. Um, and then in the event that there are no beneficiaries immediately identifiable, um, then the executor and you as the advisor will actually look for everyone who's got the DNA and share it according. And then you've got your funeral other wishes and we've got that there. So you've got now a, a really good, solid, flexible stuff. Um, I've got probably about another couple of minutes. So let's go back in and um, see what we've got here. I'm going to relaunch here. I'm just going to show you how quick we can do um, that. So what I've got is I won't take it to the print uh, but I'm going to go into the general. Uh, would you like to make another will for the spouse? Watch it. What happens when I go yes? Uh, see how that pops out down there. So I'm just going to go down the spouse will. 
Um, and again, um, so it's again, it's prepared from the data capture. So a lot of this stuff is carried through. Um, it's going to be Sally Smith. Uh, do you want to appoint a professional advisor? Yes. So you can see it actually takes up um, Joan's account. So it should be Williams Financial. It was what there was there before. Cool. PTY Limited. Um, executor um, is obviously John Smith. Uh, successor executor, um, do you want to do yes? Now we could do Max um, there. Let's say she gets on better with June. Actually, we might do that because it's kids from the first marriage. We'll use John Jones there. Um, second successor, um, I would say uh, we go no on that one. And then also that would be the end. Specific gifts, um, she has not, she doesn't have any specific gifts. Testamentary trust, um, I would go um, yes. Uh, is the spouse to be included? No. Are there any related entities? No. Um, the trust is to provide for Nathan for the rest of the rest of his life, um, but no distributions. Less. It is for. Sorry, I'm just going to testing there. Distributions, unless it is for a re. Habilitation. Um, rehabilitation. Um, also, the trustee of the trust um, is to complete random drug testing on Nathan. Prior to making any income or capital distribution in any income, yeah. Um, if Nathan fails or is no longer alive, the next line of beneficiaries, uh, my stepchildren, Max, June, and their children. Okay, so that's, that's a testamentary trust. So that's what I would be putting in for Nathan, if that makes sense. Child guardianship is obviously not an issue there. Um, so no, pet guardianship, no again. Okay, so um, obviously she's got a little dog there that's gonna go to the um, guardian, who's the Betty, who's the neighbor. And funeral wishes, do you wanna have funeral wishes? No. So suddenly then we can go and have a look. Um, again, that will produce a, um, uh, now notice how that's not a mirror will. Um, in fact, I would never do mirror wills. They just don't make sense. You're better off because you, you've got to go down generations when you start to do that. So now I've got a third iteration of um, just straight out of the interview. You've got John Smith, you can see there. Um, I'll just blow that up a little bit uh, further. Um, and then you can see you're going down here, blah, blah, blah. And now you've got Sally Smith. So that's how quick it takes. Again, all the same preamble. Um, same sort of thing there, the executors are John, um, then it goes over to John Jones, um, initial administration, and then the bloodline testamentary trust, we put in the terms and conditions there, pet guardianship and general powers. So that just shows you how, what a, a very methodical, uh, great process that we have um, using just this LYD will. So if you've got any questions at any point in time, Feel free to use support, but I would strongly advise, strongly advise that anyone who wants to go down this track, because I can tell you 
for the people who are using it um, in our group, um, all of their clients want wills and EPOAs. They don't like going to um, lawyers. Um, so again, feel free to, well, I, I would strongly advise that you should be doing this course. Anyway, that's enough for me. Um, it's Grant Abbott speaking and thanks for all your questions. Um, and look, really looking forward to, I virtually built the course, really looking forward to seeing you um, in uh, July. It's an online course, but it will be live. It will be a live event. Anyway, it's Grant Abbott signing off.